Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And we're going to have such a great time today, just based on the fact that you know we I spent a couple minutes before the program started chatting with my guests, and I'm just thinking, oh, this is going to be so much fun. And so please join me in welcoming Kate McKay to our program today. Welcome, Kate. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing amazing, Deb. I'm so excited to get after it with you today in this call and bring some really powerful value to your audience. So thank you again for having me. Perfect. I love it. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you and then we'll dive in. So Kate McKay is the CEO of Sienna Strategy Partners. She is a certified high performance success coach and business strategist. Kate is an international best-selling author, and of course, we're going to talk about a couple of her books, transformational speaker, athlete, podcaster, and multi-million dollar business owner whose passion to help others achieve a life of greater confidence, courage, and clarity of purpose. Kate has been interviewed on Bloomberg, Fox Business News, NASDAQ, and PBS. She has written for Entrepreneur Family Circle and was also a monthly columnist for the Daily News for eight years. She has been in numerous podcasts, as well as Kate has just published her newest book, Claim Your Inner Warrior, which joins her bestseller, Claim Your Inner Badass, and several other books. And we really want to talk about the book you've got coming out soon. So again, please join me in welcoming Kate McKay to our program. Woohoo! That's awesome. It's always always weird sitting on the other end of that, right? I know. Um, but, you know, it really it makes me feel like I'm a total hot mess, Deb, actually. It's like, who's this woman that does all this stuff? She must be crazy. <laughs> well, and, it, you know, but that's one of the things that is is so much fun is when we have all of this stuff going on and we still do a great job at it, right? You know, and, and but that's that takes a really big skill set to, to not be the hamster on the wheel going, you know, 500 different directions but to be the person who knows where our path is going, which is, of course, you know, how you help people. But tell us a little bit more about how you got to where you are today, because it has been kind of a journey of ups and downs, Um, you know, but I I always love hearing how my guests discover that this is their passion in life, at least for right now. Right. Well, I would say that I am just perpetual 12 year old. And I would like to say that there's a, a, a magic I don't know if any of you listeners know the game Candyland, right? So it is that journey. Um, you know, you never know where you're going to, you know, meet the ugly and, you know, where you're going to have to go back to the beginning. And mm-hmm. it's the journey all through the colors and varieties of life and such as it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like Les Brown says, you know, when you when life knocks you down, make sure you fall on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. And that right. has truly been my journey, my journey mm-hmm. of resiliency through through trauma, through challenges, and always uh, being committed to the light and being the light for others and guiding Mm -hmm. others through. I don't know why that was the case, but it was imprinted in me from a very, very young age, from a big family. I'm one of nine children. There was chaos around me um, since the moment I was born. So I have grown and developed myself through chaos. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking to share any of the information that I have to help others so it doesn't have to be so difficult. And the most important thing, to let people know that you are not alone. Right. You are not alone. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit more because it, you and I were, were chatting. I mean, that is is so absolutely critical to know that you're not alone. And I see this all the time. You probably see this all the time also. When someone starts a business or even when they've been doing it for years and years and years, when they're that boss, that owner, they think, I have to know it all. And I have to do it all. You know, that word delegate, that word, uh, those words ask for help seem like you're admitting failure. So 
let's let's really discuss this because you, as you said, you know, being that community asking for help is absolutely so important. Well, I think that what I love about working with younger people, because I work with a lot of people too in their 20s and 30s. I mean, mm-hmm. that's actually the predominant people that hire ah, me lately. I love it. It's very interesting because I'm 12 <laughs> and I resonate with younger people. Mm-hmm. I just think that they have some wisdom that I want more of. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested in not only, you know, coaching, my mm-hmm. work as a high performance coach, coaching is an influence process. Mm-hmm. It's an influence process. Mm-hmm. I'm not providing them the answers. It's right. a sales process, mm-hmm. right? Because all I'm doing, you know what I'm selling? I'm selling the best version of my client. I'm yeah. selling them back to them. Mm-hmm. And they say, oh my gosh, Kate, you're so amazing. Mm-hmm. No, they're seeing, I'm mirroring their brilliance. Mm-hmm. That's the highest form of mm-hmm. God. That's the highest form of um, service mm-hmm. in my mind. That's how I serve. I mirror other people's greatness. I love it. Mm-hmm. However, I didn't, uh, I didn't ask for that because I wasn't sure I could trust other people to help me mm-hmm. because I was a lone wolf. I mm-hmm. never fit in peeps. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't. And that's what happens with, oftentimes with people who are looking for their own path that isn't, just mm-hmm. isn't laid out for them. Right. Yeah. They're I, not, yeah. they're not a good fit with corporate culture, things like right. that. Right. And there's also people who aren't a good fit for entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. I'm right. going to be dead on honest. Oh they yeah. Some people, I mean, yeah. where would we be if we didn't have people that were a good fit for corporate culture? <laughs> we need I those know. people. It's true. But do you have to be super comfortable with being uncomfortable as an entrepreneur? You have to be super uncomfortable being super comfortable, being uncomfortable to be a game changer in this mm-hmm. world. And I'm a master at being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Because I've been forced to, based on some, uh, you know, in particular, I'd like to just address um, something in particular. Um, Kate was always like the bubbly one, the outgoing one. I'm talking about me in the third person. So people always saw me as it's easy for Kate. You know, she's just happy. She's positive, right. you know, even in my own family. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, you, what you did not see was the high level of self-doubt, self-loathing, mm-hmm. and um, self-abuse, you know, really, on mm-hmm. the negative thought processes mm-hmm. and um and all of those things that happen when you don't fit in and i'm classic adhd but mm-hmm. i always wanted to do better i always wanted to bring the light but i mm-hmm. i stumbled through solo mm-hmm. and then that all really changed in 2017 um i have three children and i had just built a multi-million dollar company in the precious metals and and, uh, and then started launching my coaching business and mm-hmm. in t- 2017 i lost my my oldest son, my my love, my light, um, my son William, mm-hmm. um, to as his friends describe it, Deb, he ascended on his own accord, mm. ah, committed suicide, mm-hmm. um, and and the fact that that's the way his friends described it mm-hmm. moved me so deeply. Right, because as sad and as tragic, mm-hmm. that was a positive way to look at it. And a choice and what that did. And this is what I want that I'm sharing this story because I want the viewers and listeners to hear that, Mm -hmm. that we need to take personal responsibility for the choices. Mm -hmm. My son, Will, made a choice. Mm -hmm. He has free will. (laughs) How ironic, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I had to learn in that moment was I needed to surrender having control over anything. Mm -hmm. And I needed to say, I know nothing. I am, I am here on a new path, a new journey of healing and service. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what that looks like, but I need people to help me out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I really was forced at that point to bring in a tribe, a discipleship, even of people that were going to hold me to my highest and Mm -hmm. best, even in my worst and Mm -hmm. darkest time. Oh man, it is powerful. Mm -hmm. It is powerful. And it actually brought me to this new level of commitment to Mm -hmm. service through that process. And now um, I'm un, uh, unfettered. I'm not, I'm not held down and, you know, really intense things can happen. And I'm like, wow, all right. You know, I lost money on that deal. Oh, okay. Right. I just don't, I'm not attached because mm-hmm. I made a choice and then the outcome is what it is. Mm-hmm. And, and then you, you deal yeah. with that. Right. Mm-hmm. But how are we learning our lessons instead of being frozen in terror mm-hmm. or frozen in indecision right. and, my work as a coach is to push people into that place with love, mm-hmm. but I'm paid to push. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I write right. books. I do a podcast. I do mm-hmm. everything I do. And I'm not afraid to have conversations where other people are fear to mm-hmm. tread because I'm not afraid because I'm coming from a place of love right. always. Mm-hmm. 
Right. You know, and uh, it, it's funny. We're like sisters from another mother um, because I, I feel a lot the same way. You know, people are always like, oh, you're always so positive. You're always so upbeat. Um, you know, and, and for, for people who don't know, you know, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And in the last six years, I've had 30 ish surgical procedures, let alone everything else that I, I had. And people are like, oh, you're still so bubbly. Well, I'm like, I have pity parties, folks, <laughs> you know, and there are days where I feel crappy. I mean, you know, and, and all sorts of things. And to me, the key is, first of all, that's not a bad thing. You know, we have to acknowledge those times. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is to get out of them and to not wallow in them. And so, you know, while I might do something like post on Facebook, hey, I'm kind of having an off day. That's as far as I go with it. You know, and, and, um, you know, and, and, uh, but, or I try and, and I, I turn it, you know, I, I actually am still in treatment. And so every time I'm in for treatment, I post pictures, you know, and people are like, wow. And I'm like, well, look, here I am again, attached to the thing, you know, and all of this stuff. Um, and, you know, so, and, and which, you know, one of the things that I have discovered is obviously humor is, is a really Everything. big part of all of this, but we have to acknowledge that there are those down times um, because when we're, aiming to always absolutely be positive, then we think there's something wrong when we're not. And mm. it's just human nature to, to not right. be happy all the time. You know, I'm, you know, I'm sure, especially with the loss of a child, you know, no matter how the circumstance happens, there are times where you just think, what if, you know, oh, absolutely. And, and, and right. yeah, you know, and, and that, what if didn't happen, you know, but it, it doesn't mean you don't feel it, um, you know, and, and so I think it is so important. And, you know, even in your business, if things go wrong, okay, figure out what the heck you did so you don't do it again. Right. And, and I guess that's the, the expression of like our mm -hmm. rear view mirror. It's like proportionately compared to our, our windshield. Mm -hmm. It's so much smaller, right? So, yes, we do have to look back for context, mm -hmm. but we can't live in the rear view mirror because right. we're never going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just as a metaphor, it's pretty significant mm -hmm. that we cannot, we cannot uh, move forward. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I guess, the key why I focus so much on the high performance habits of mm -hmm. like productivity. Mm -hmm. or um, really confidence. These are thematics mm -hmm. for me because these are the questions that people always ask. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, I'm ADHD. My process isn't necessarily pretty, but I've realized I need a team of people to help me create mm -hmm. a system. And mm -hmm. what I want people to hear is systems are sexy. They're mm -hmm. sexy people because mm -hmm. if you can create a system for your life, mm -hmm. you are so free. Words right. cannot describe it. And that's coming from someone who is anti-system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Um, oh, who wants yeah. to be organized then? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's really, and, and we can come up with any word or any terminology, but it, it's part of the reason why I have a regiment, say, for example, around my fitness. Fitness mm -hmm. and weight training in particular saved mm -hmm. my life. And so my newest book is called Claim Your Inner Hottie. It mm -hmm. will be released in January. Oh, and I can't wait to read it. Mm -hmm. I know. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. So it's really just focused on because I'll go to a speaker event, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm speaking or I'm on, you know, whatever, where I'm mm -hmm. out in public, even people are like, what do you do to look like you do? And I like laugh. I'm like, well, I have ADHD. And then I say, well, the truth is I lift weights. Mm -hmm. I lift heavy weights. Mm -hmm. And they're like, right. oh, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm small, but I've, mm -hmm. that's been my consistent. Mm -hmm. And it's not in number one. Let me just go over this. Number one, it's not just because we can be our Michelangelo and create a physique and a mm -hmm. body that is representative and we live a life of integrity mm -hmm. because we're strong from the inside out mm -hmm. and from the outside in, mm -hmm. but also just from a metabolic process, mm -hmm. our brain and our muscles, they're all interconnected. Right. So we, even when we're looking at neuroscience, mm -hmm. okay? So weight training isn't just about the way you look. It's about mm -hmm. saving yourself if you mm -hmm. fall. It's about having greater blood flow. It's right. having clarity in your mm -hmm. brain. It goes down to the level of how you use your dopamine. Mm -hmm. This is science information mm -hmm. looking at exercise. Right. So I'm deeply committed to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is the truth that you and I are similar age time. When I first started lifting weights in the 80s, mm -hmm. no women were in the gym, gym right. and mm -hmm. no women were under a squat rack. Mm -hmm. But that was part of the reason, even then I was like, what are you doing? And I wanted to be in a gym. I was more comfortable in an all men's gym than I was at the Barbie gyms. It mm -hmm. just was like, I have five brothers. I'm used to the vibe. And, and the Barbie gym, let's be honest, is very different. 
I mean, it's yes. great for some people, but right. no. <laughs> yeah, no. And it, well, it just didn't test me. And so I, I think that what I would love the viewers uh, and, and to really hear and know is that we are, our growth happens on the edges mm -hmm. and we can walk to the edge and we can kind of dance to the edge, mm -hmm. but you need someone next to you. You right. need a tribe of people next mm -hmm. to you. You need a coach. You need mm -hmm. a tribe mm -hmm. of people that are going to walk the edge right. with you. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do it alone. And I, I I would never be in the place where I'm right now if I didn't hire a coach. Right. You can't, you cannot, in this day, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a number one growing, it's one of the mm -hmm. top growing industries. Mm -hmm. So we can't do it alone. We don't have to do it alone. And uh, that's what it's, I'm here. I'm mm -hmm. here for anybody on on this podcast mm -hmm. to know that I'm here to help you. Mm -hmm. So certainly you can reach right. out to me and um, I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I love that because- you know, we've, I've been doing this a long time, you know, over 10 years, we started the podcast, you know, a long time ago, holy schmoly, when it actually, it was probably, it was, well, it was not a podcast, you know, we did record it, but you know, it was, it, that was before, you know, really a lot of people had thought about what a podcast was. And so I've talked with a lot of, of business coaches, a lot of people who used a business coach. And I always went, well, that's nice. And you, right, you know exactly, you know, because I was like, but, and, and the little voice inside my head was said, but I don't need that. Mm -hmm. And earlier in, in 2022, I decided, you know what, it's time. And, and I did hire a coach and, you know, it was, she has pushed me, like you said, mm -hmm. to do things that were in my head but I always kept pushing back on them, right? I can't do that because, you know, we have all of those limiting thoughts. And I, I want to talk a little bit more about limiting thoughts, but, but, you know, getting that coach and having that person say, here's what you need to do. And, and I think the, the most important thing was I trust her, you know, and, and I know it's like you said, you know, I know when she is pushing hard, it's because it's for my good. You know, they're not doing, you know, now, you know, in, in, I'm, you know, I'm, I am a couch potato now, but I was a quasi athletic person when I was younger and, you know, coaches always push you really hard. They don't want to push you past the breaking point because then, you know, what good are you going to be? But they, they do, they push you right up to that edge. Um, and, but when we try and do it ourselves, it just, you, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know, and, and, but having that coach, I think was really what is, is so incredibly beneficial. So no longer do I say, that's nice. I'm like, no, get a coach, get a coach. <laughs> but when I ever heard that Oprah had five, I'm like, what am I doing? Right. I mean, it's like, cause we, cause it, listen, this is the bottom line. If we want an A game, my thesis is this. Okay. Mm -hmm. We had COVID. Mm -hmm. So COVID made everyone just lock their doors in fear and, and hide. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, so we were lived in a place of fear. Some people are still there. We moved on to the second phase, which is the phase of protection. I need to protect myself. I'm hoarding gold. I'm hoarding toilet paper. Protection, mm -hmm. us against them. Vax, mm -hmm. not vax. Gay, straight. Abortion, no abortion. It became a divisive culture. Right. Mm -hmm. I would say to you that 80% of people are still in those two. Pretty close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the people who are going to succeed are the people that are the productive people. Mm -hmm. The people right. that say, this is my opportunity to shine. Mm -hmm. This is my opportunity to make more money. This is the mm -hmm. opportunity to be in the best shape of my life. Mm -hmm. This is my opportunity to have the best communities. Right. This is the opportunity for me to go deep and mm -hmm. wide into my greatness. Mm -hmm. This is the time we are at. Right. We don't have time to waste. Mm -hmm. So there is a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. And my question is, what will it take for us, for you, to step in and take personal responsibility mm -hmm. for your greatness. Right. And right. what are you going to do mm -hmm. to release limiting beliefs mm -hmm. that make you play small, mm -hmm. that keep you in the place of stuff, mm -hmm. that keep you in relationships that do not serve you, that keeps you in a job you do not like, that keeps you in habits that you know are sabotaging mm -hmm. your highest and best sexy self, mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. What are you going to do and take personal responsibility and release right. that? And I'm talking about people who are very high performers. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about just, I'm talking about every human mm -hmm. has limiting beliefs. Right. It doesn't matter how mm -hmm. successful my clients mm -hmm. are. We always can find them. Mm -hmm. And, and then my job is to discover. Mm -hmm. And then with their guidance, mm -hmm. the second part is creating a decision-making mm -hmm. process. This right. is all informed by the client. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not a consultant. Right. I listen, mm -hmm. I discover, mm -hmm. I re I just ask more questions mm -hmm. and then we create together again, right. as an influence mm -hmm. process, a forward mm -hmm. future casting mm -hmm. plan right. for them yeah. that they are uncomfortable mm -hmm. with, but I'm holding the dream because mm -hmm. I believe in them. Mm -hmm. Right. It comes back to core belief. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and, and I, I, I do see this like an athlete. You know, and, and, you know, and, and I love that, that you, you are very athletic and, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm guessing a big part of all of this is all athletes, I don't care what level they are, they have coaches. If they're going to be successful, let me put it that way. Tom Brady has coaches, you know, hockey, you know, any, any, any big sport, you know, uh, Tiger Woods, <coughs> excuse me, has coaches. I mean, any, any elite athlete or, you know, somebody who's, you know, playing softball on the weekends, they have coaches. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, as you said, it's that personal responsibility. I mean, you know, somebody can tell us, somebody can beat us about with a wet noodle, all of these things. But until we say, yes, I am going to do this, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you will change your mind. Mm -hmm. And you know when we take that's about okay. Yeah, well, and, and yes and no, right? Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, is when we're looking at, I'm certified as behavioral change mm -hmm. person, and so you know the first few days you psyched, mm -hmm. second to third week you you're like, why am I doing this? I compete yeah. in bikini. And when it hurts, whether yeah. you're like maybe writing a big check or yeah. you know you're like oh. right. And you're not going to want to, and you're not going to want to understand resistance is part of the game and you have to be comfortable with resistance. And that's the pivotal area where we really need someone to either mentor us, um, mm -hmm. hire a coach. And I, I think a community is essential because if you right. put it out there and you say, I'm going to do this this year, I'm doing 50 webinars, 50, five, zero. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. I say that out loud. Guess mm -hmm. what? That's going to shake me up and mm -hmm. make me committed. And, so. and your community is going to keep you accountable. They're going to say, Kate, Kate, how many have you mm -hmm. done? Kate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number one today. <laughs> yep. So yep. it's just, it, and it's just like, what are those commitments that you're willing to take yourself, take mm -hmm. uh, and to raise your game to a whole other level? Right. I think that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. And uh, people who work with me, oh, 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 they know it's not going to be a, a light game, but guess what? We're going to laugh. We're going to laugh until like we I said, like, you got to have humor. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. If it's not fun, it's not worth it. I go deep and bring the joy. That's my motto. Right. right. You know, and it, it's funny because I remember over 20 years ago when I decided to start my own business, I did it as a, as a side gig. This was before they called it the gig economy, right? You know, we just did this, this side thing because I liked what I was doing, but it was just part-time. I mean, you know, it was, it, it really was part-time. I knew that going into it. So I started this side business. And I met with a business consultant who gave me lots of great tips. But one of the things she told me was I had jumped off that diving board and then turned around and grabbed it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there I was with my little fingers hanging on to that diving board. And she basically walked up and stomped on my fingers. So I had to let go. Um, you know, and, 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 but it was, you know, she put it to me. She said, you can either climb back up and don't do this, or you can let go. And, you know, and, and, I went in right after that and told these absolutely wonderful people that I was leaving them. Um, probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do because I liked where I was and I liked what I was doing, but I knew that to make myself happy, I had to, to do something different. Um, mm. you know, and, and so, yeah, you know, it, it really does take that gentle, not so gentle nudge sometimes from, from others to really make you, you do it. Yeah. You have to be uncomfortable. And I love being uncomfortable with people. I love being in the space of holding safe space mm -hmm. for that space mm -hmm. because it's people can trust me because I believe in them. I believe in when they tell me they want to play mm -hmm. for the NFL or mm -hmm. they want to build, you know, make a million mm -hmm. bucks and they want to, it's like, all right, mm -hmm. you want that? Right. I'm going to hold the dream. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I'm going to hold the dream even when you forget it. And mm -hmm. I will be a reminder. Mm -hmm. You're going to love me. Right. <laughs> yeah. We might go, oh, it's Kate again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. There she is. I keep showing up with the same big smile. Right. Let's go. Right. Oh, I don't feel like you today. I'm like, that's all right. Mm -hmm. I love you yeah. anyway. Yeah. And I think that that's the beautiful thing. I did used to own a gym mm -hmm. and I'm a mom. So mm -hmm. I'm used to people not liking me. Mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of funny because I know they love me. 
but they don't like me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? I'm really okay with you not liking me, but I know deep down you love me. And Mm -hmm. they laugh. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, I remember this funny story when I used to drive my daughter to school and I, and she'd be crabby and I'd be driving and I'm in a good mood, you know, Mm -hmm. and and I do a dialogue and I'm like, Mm -hmm. mom, and I'm being her mom. Mm -hmm. I am so glad you're giving me a ride to school. Mom, thank you so much for making me the best breakfast ever. And she's sitting there going, mom, you're the best. And I keep saying it. Then all of a sudden she just looks at me. She can't stop laughing. She starts Mm -hmm. laughing. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, how are we here to shift mm-hmm. energy, both for right. ourselves and mm-hmm. for other people? Mm-hmm. We can do that. We're in charge of how we can shift mm-hmm. our emotions. And I have the tools. That's mm-hmm. why I love my work, because I have the actual tools and I can ask the actual questions to initiate change mm-hmm. to, to people's greatness. And I love what I do. Mm-hmm. Right. So I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, because we you know, we, we have been saying, you know, we're talking about getting a coach, all of those things. What exactly is a a high performance coach? Because it is different because you are certified to do this, um, you know, and and so tell us a little bit more about what someone can expect from a high performance coach. That's a great question. So there are so many coaches out there. and, And as we mentioned, coaching is a huge growing business. But the problem is if they don't have a system, then it's not coaching. You have to have a system that's Mm outcome-based, measurable in order to measure people's Mm -hmm. growth. How do you know you got to point B if you didn't know that you were aiming for point B? Exactly. And now we're coming up with ways that we can measure. And so my my mentor, Coach Brandon Bouchard, did spent millions of dollars on research and discovered something amazing Mm -hmm. that it wasn't the disc and it wasn't the strength finder. It wasn't your Enneagram and it wasn't your life design. These are what determine people being high performers. Now, I'm talking high performance. It could be a CEO. It could be the head of the PTO. It could be a mom. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What high performance is, is having sustained and and a a consistent sense of Mm -hmm. fulfillment Mm -hmm. in your life, Mm -hmm. professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. And what he discovered, what there are six high performance habits that determined Mm -hmm. the highest level. Mm -hmm. Their clarity, energy, necessity, mm. productivity, mm-hmm. influence, and courage. Mm. These the biggie. are the areas that we dig into. Mm-hmm. And then we dig in also into the mastery of those qualities. Mm-hmm. So we are given the language so that my client can communicate and get very clear on who mm-hmm. they are, how they want to measure their interactions, mm-hmm. and how they're going to measure their success mm-hmm. moving forward. Right. It's powerful, powerful work. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, and, and from a business perspective, you have to do those things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I am a marketing person. And so we tell people, you know, you have to have a plan. You have to have goals. You know, is it that you're going to sell X number? Is it that you're going to, you know, have X number of people in your database? Then what? I mean, you know, it's not just, hey, let's get them in the database. I love the people who get so caught up in how many people they have on Facebook. And I'm like, doesn't matter. <laughs> you, know, you could have 10,000 fans of your Facebook page, but if 9,999 of them are not going to buy from you or at least refer to you, they don't count. Nope. Um, you know, and, and so it's, it's that, you know, that, that ultimate goal, because let's be honest, the ultimate goal is I, I, oh, I have my, my visual aid <laughs> you know, and, and it's okay to say we want money. Um, you know, and it was funny. I was having in, in a mastermind group, we, we were having a discussion, um, and, and we talked about the fact that in, in some fields, it's, it's kind of like taboo to have, to, to, to want to make money. And in, and actually not, I mean, in a lot of things, because, you know, you talk about family and and things like that, where they say, uh, you know, uh, you know, what, what do you mean? You know, and, and, and and we even look at it, right? You know, we look at those TV programs or, or hear about somebody who has, you know, the 22 bedroom mansion. <laughs> We're like, why would you want 22 bedrooms? I mean, you know, but yeah, you know, that's that was their goal and that mm-hmm. was fine. You know, but it is okay for us to want to make money because we can't do what we want to do if we don't make money. 
Or you know, and so that way. just like, that's the other piece too, is that it may not be things, especially when we're talking about the younger generation mm -hmm. that we, I'm here to coach and guide mm -hmm. and they don't want things. And, right. and they're, and so many people are giving the younger generation a hard time. Like they don't work hard. This and that. We they raise don't. them. Right. <laughs> I know. But, and they have different values. Right. They're a different value generation. They value experience. Right. Right. Why is that a negative? Mm -hmm. I, I find that shocking. Right. Um, that we, we as a, 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 you know, the older culture mm -hmm. find their values unacceptable. They're mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. and we will come to honor them or not. Right. But I believe that we need to honor them and we need to ask them powerful questions. Right. So they're clear on their values mm -hmm. so that they can have greater impact mm -hmm. from the place right. of their values. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I've, I, you know, I've, I've spoken with several millennials on the program and, and people like that. Um, and it's, um, you know, one of those things where we, you know, we just go, um, you know, you, you have these things that you want, you know, and, and, and like you said, by generation, it's different. And millennials, you know, I, I love working with them because like you said, they, they know they have to have money too, because they have to, you know, they, they have to live, they have to eat, but they, they want those experiences. And, and one of the things that I, I love, you know, I, I, you know, years ago talked with millennials who were already working remotely right. and, you know, and, and loving that because they, they had the freedom, they were able to travel, they were able to have all these other experiences, all of these various things. If they had kids, they were having them experience all of that also. And so, you know, that, that when we were forced to do that because of COVID, we all went, ooh. Now I've worked from home for 10 years or for 20 years. And so, you know, I was like, whatever. But, but yeah, when people went, you know, hey, I can really do this and be productive. And, and you know, we, we went uh, several weeks ago and, and spent a week at Myrtle Beach. Mm. We worked the whole time we were there, ah. but we were at the beach, right? You know, and, and so, you know, the freedom that, you know, COVID, yes, ick, nasty, bleh. But it did teach us things like we don't have to be in an office. We don't have to do those god awful, horrible commutes or those endless meetings where you accomplish nothing. Because now that we do those darn things online, we do them pretty quick, right? Um, yes. You know, and, and so it's, you know, it is one of those things where we're learning the older generation from the millennials and we are learning, maybe we don't need that Lamborghini, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and I wouldn't want one anyway, because I would crash it, you know, and, and so, but, but yeah, you know, it's, it, 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 but what I love is when you work with people, you, you find what they want, not what other people think they mm -hmm. should have. Um, you know, you mentioned, you know, this being in a big family and having them go, what the heck are you doing? Um, you know, we hear that all the time and we hear that in our heads, right? Those little voices. And especially for women, why are you doing that? You can't do that. You're not smart enough. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, I love that you help people get totally out of those paradigms and really embrace what they were meant to do. Yeah. And I do work a lot with men because, you know, obviously I lost, I've lost a brother and I lost a son and I have five brothers and I'm an athlete and the same conversations that, you know, you mentioned women, men are so limited and pegged in. And right. Oh yeah. They society. really don't want to ask for help in a lot of ways. Right. And they're in our society where we are conditioning men to communicate like women, they're not women and we need to cut them some slack and let them and give them time and space so that they can communicate. Mm -hmm. um, so, so anyway, I think right. that's a really important conversation mm -hmm. to have. So men mm -hmm. and women are different. And that's the reason why I, I wrote claim your inner warrior, my book, mm -hmm. especially for men, because mm -hmm. there's a different path. There's a different mm -hmm. path and we need men to be warriors. We need men to be strong mm -hmm. and we need women to be who they are as women. Mm -hmm. We are built divinely different. Right. And I yes. love that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so right. powerful. Yeah, you know, and and I think that's one of the things that I've loved seeing recently are the the people who you know no, embrace that, but also embrace the other, uh, you know, and but know that we need those combinations. You know, we need the women who are strong but nurturing. We need the men who are you know that that are the leaders. Yeah, you know, and let's face it, for you know 
the foreseeable future, the men are going to be the leaders in our society. But we need them to start having empathy. And, you know, and again, I think COVID in many ways forced them to do that. So it's, or it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, that's I the always, thing, you know, Deb. The, or the color, not, because look yeah. at the suicide rate right now. So I, you know, I think that it's a, it's a big crisis issue. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, it, I think it's pivotal time right now. I think COVID was very damaging to men. Right. And, it's well, and so especially those micromanagers, right. Who needed their employees under their thumb so that they could see what they were doing every single minute of the day. They just, you know, couldn't, couldn't handle that. Um, you know, and, and I think but, it's every day, man, too, mm -hmm. because it just, it, 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 when you put men in lockdown and all they mm -hmm. had was really their work, Mm -hmm. You take away their work and you take away their value. Mm -hmm. And so that's a cultural issue mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that, and they're not given the tools to find ways to actually communicate mm -hmm. who they are. We say we want men that are empathic, mm -hmm. but when they express their emotions, our society destroys them. Right. So oh yeah. They're like, oh really yeah, mm -hmm. you're one of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Yeah. You know, and it's, it really is. It's just such a shame because when we have all of those characteristics, I think we really do succeed, um, you yeah. know, and, and because like on, uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, we, we look down on men. We also look down on women who take charge. They're bossy and they're that other B word, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, and, and so, yeah, I mean, it is just one of those things where, you know, for one thing, hello, stop judging people. <laughs> But more importantly, if that's you, don't care. You know, if you're going to be bossy, if you're going to, you know, all of those things, embrace that. Um, you know, and 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 to me, that is is you know, a, a, a lot of what you do is you help people see, you know, as as you said, how to be the best of themselves. And that goes back to the whole conversation on mm -hmm. confidence mm -hmm. and. Basically, confidence is an inside job. When you mm -hmm. see someone that's confident, what is about that mm -hmm. person that you mm -hmm. admire? Ask mm -hmm. yourself that. Right. Maybe maybe you have envy mm -hmm. about somebody. Mm -hmm. Ah, good. Lean right. into it. Yeah. It's not a reason to hate. It's right. just like to look at it and go, man, I envy that person. I'm jealous of that person. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what have they got that I want? Yeah. And, and do I want it? Want it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe it's a quality about mm -hmm. them. I mean, it could be their fitness. It could be their money. It could be mm -hmm. their relationship. Look at that mm -hmm. and assess that and be like, what do I need to do? What action do I need to take mm -hmm. to be more? And, it, and it, you know, if you're looking at just the material thing, maybe that's like, oh my God, that outfit's gorgeous. I wish I could afford that. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. what do I need to do right. to embrace that aspect mm -hmm. of me? Everything mm -hmm. is a personal ref mm -hmm. reflection back into your psychology. Mm -hmm. And making sure that you understand once again that it is our responsibility mm -hmm. to ask ourselves those right. questions and right. love on ourselves mm -hmm. and find humor mm -hmm. in our our experience. Because mm -hmm. if we can't celebrate ourselves, if we mm -hmm. can't make light of our foibles, mm -hmm. uh, life is going to be very challenging. And mm -hmm. we will be in that state of anxiety mm -hmm. and depression right. and overwhelm. Right. And you deserve more people. Mm -hmm. You deserve more than that. And right. this is your time. And, you know, join us on in this tribe. And I, I'm grateful for this time together, Deb, because it, this is the way that tribes grow mm -hmm. is now you and I are in a community right. together. Yep. And how can we support each other? And my question, Deb, would be to you, how can I support you, Deb, mm -hmm. in your excellence pursuit? Right. You know, and it, it is, and, and, for me, one of the first things is to 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 acknowledge. Yes, I need your help, and that's a good thing. Yes, um, you know. But I want, I'm going to turn it back on you because for those people who are saying, "I do need help," I want to work with Kate. How do people find you, and how do they reach you? Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. So you can just go to my website at kate-mckay.com. Mm -hmm. And also Amazon has all my books. Mm -hmm. It's Kate McKay author. And that's where my best-selling book, Claim Your Inner Badass, mm -hmm. can be found, as well as Claim Your Inner Warrior. And shortly my new book, Claim Your Inner Badass, as well as my journal, mm -hmm. uh, Claim Your Inner Peace. Mm -hmm. So these, all these books, the word claim came to me in a dream from my son, William. He said to me, Mom, 
Why are you mad at me that I'm not here anymore in the physical realm? I've been claimed. Mm -hmm. And I was so freaked out and I looked it up and basically what it, it meant was he's been claimed by the Holy Spirit. He's all set. Mm -hmm. So basically it's my work to help people claim right. their highest and best mm -hmm. self. And that is my deep commitment to all of you viewers and listeners. I am here to help and support you claim your highest and best self. And please feel free to reach out to me. I have a really great productivity worksheet that I would love to share that I will send in the show notes that okay. I yep. and we'll, we'll put it in the, the show notes for the program. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thank you, Deb. I appreciate this time. Right. Well, you know, this really has been fantastic. And, you know, it, it's, it, we, it, we just have to do this again because we just tiny scratch the surface on this. Um, but until then, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? Lean into your greatness. Know that you're here for more. That itch, that longing, that feeling in your pit of your stomach that you know you want more, lean into that and know that that's your truth and your truth will ultimately set you free. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Well, I've been having just the absolute most wonderful discussion to start the year. This is our first program of 2023. So this is a perfect program for this because we want people to really embrace what it is that you are supposed to do. Embrace your greatness, folks. Um, you know, I can't wait to hear from people. But until then, I'm Deb Creer, talking with the wonderful Kate McKay, and everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.